just getting up or just getting out the door, we get it. Life in SoCal isn't always 9 to 5. That's why this morning team is going strong at the crack of dawn for you. Shauna, her forecast will tell you what to wear. Witt and Daniela, they'll break down all the morning's breaking news so nothing takes you by surprise. It's simple. You wake up, we'll open your eyes. Today in L.A., now starting at 4 a.m. on NBC for you. Blog Talk Radio. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and liftoff. Coach on Fire Radio. I am the everyone and thank you for tuning in for my eighth Clarity Unplugged show here on Coach on Fire Radio Network. I am your host for today, Mina Bellani. It's great to have you here. I have an amazing soul online with me today. But before I introduce her, just to remind you, it's a live show. If you are dialing in from USA, the number to dial is 646-716-7979. Seven, nine. The number again is 646-716-7979. And if you are sending me a message on my personal, you can send a message on my personal Facebook page, Mina Vailani. I would appreciate that as well. We would love to have your input and comment. Just to remind you, it's a live show, so do drop us a comment, do take part, and do ask questions. And so I have an amazing Michelle on the line with me today. Michelle is an international speaker, educator, and a consultant, and a founder of a company called The Living the True Self, and a co-author of a book, Finding Your Truth. She works with you to create your personal success strategies for life, first guiding you back to your true self, and then propelling you forward so you can experience and interact with the world in a truly powerful way. She works holistically, practically, and systematically, which ensures effective results. So without further ado, Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Are you on the line with me? I am on the line with you, Mina. Hi. (laughs) Hi. How are you today? I am good. Can I just say, I absolutely love that, um, what's it, your jingle? It's like <laughs> five, four, three, two, one. I felt like I was being lifted off into outer space. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point, right? It sort of, oh, sort of makes you feel like uh, up in the air, like right? uplifted, right? Totally, to boldly go where no one has gone before. <laughs> yes, yes. I, actually, I always feel that I'm kind of feeling a bit... Slow, and then when I hear the music, I sort of vibe, sort of, sort of wake yeah, up. It's, it's, yeah, it's very, very uplifting. It's great. Great, great, right. So, Michelle, you're enjoying the hot season in London today. I am. Um, I, do you know what? I, I was really, really tempted to sit in front of the freezer and have this radio oh. interview today. <laughs> oh, it yeah. is absolutely sweltering in the UK, but it's nice and I am enjoying it. Yeah, I think we should make the most of it because before you know, it will disappear again. Yeah, I mean, most people say we don't ever have a summer in UK. Well, we can say to them, oh yeah, we got one. We got one. (laughs) Yes, definitely. Okay, so here, you are here to talk about discover the work you were born to do. Yes, yes, I'm passionate about that. Yes, Jenny, how did you come about and where did it all begin? Um, Okay, that's a little bit of a long question, but okay. So basically, I was was an accountant for about 30 years. I mean, deal with that for a second. 30 years as an accountant. And I won't go into too much, but needless to say, you know, in my first 10 years as as an accountant, you know, I was climbing up the career ladder, all was going really, really fine. And then the second 10 years, you're into, um, you know, nearly 20 years as an accountant, and you're sort of really starting to get fed up 
you know, you've had enough and you really understand that, hang on, I'm, I'm definitely not born to do this. I was good mm-hmm. at it, but didn't, it didn't fulfill me. It didn't fulfill me in any shape or form. And at those 20 years, I was actually employed and I was having some serious, serious, serious issues with employment. And so I decided, well, I had enough experience. I'd I'd sort of really branch out and start my own accountancy firm, which I did. And while it was during that period, um, I sort of thought having my own company, I'd be a lot happier but I still wasn't happy. And I realized it it was the work that I was doing that was not making me happy. It wasn't the circumstances around the work. It was actually the work itself. And so I decided, right, I was going to change career, but I didn't just want another job. I kind of wanted something that was going to really fulfill me, something that I could say I'm contributing to humanity. Do you know what I mean? Something that really drives your soul. And yeah. it, took me, it took me about seven years to get there because, to be perfectly honest, Mina, there was really, there was so little guidance I was out there. I mean, I did all the, the courses called Follow Your Passions and Make Profit or Design Your Destiny and Date with Destiny and everything with that sort of name. I did it. But unfortunately, none of them really led to anything. And, you know, I did career guidance, but because I only had one skill, which was accounting, Uh, It kind of led me right back to finance, which is where I was really trying to get away from. So I did a lot of personal development courses and a lot of healing courses because I thought, you know, I really want to be able to help people. So healing and coaching seemed just the, the natural way to go. And after seven long years, I finally got there. I got this amazing aha moment and I knew that I had to teach and I knew I had to speak and I knew that I had to teach people about really having flow in their lives and how to live the best life possible. And so coming away from that, the first thing I thought to myself is if you need to have flow in your life, you need to understand who you are and what you were born to do. And so the absolutely first program I created was Discover the Work You're Born to Do. And that was born from me knowing um, where I had gotten and just looking back on my life to see where I had been missing all the signs, you know, and where I had been ignoring who I was. And so I created this workshop and it basically is the cornerstone and foundation of the work we do now. So that's kind of yeah, that's the story in a nutshell, really. <laughs> yeah, that's quite interesting because, uh, as you know, I'm an accountant myself, right? And I'm at that yeah. crossroad in life as well. Like, I'm thinking, yes, I'm doing this, but this is not what I was really born to do. And, uh, and in fact, it's funny you say that it took you seven years. I've kind of known it for quite a while. It's been 10 years. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's like and I'm still sort of finding my place. And I'm yeah. sure loads of people out there like me, sort of trying to decide exactly where do they fit in in this world, right? Yeah. And do you know what? It was like, I mean, you say you've known for a while. I think I knew for a while. I think yeah. most people know. I think most people know when they are not in a job that's suited for them. But I think the difference that makes a difference is when you take action. Because I probably knew for about 10 years, even before I started taking action, but it's always the universe, I tell you, it it works in mysterious ways. And and I often say this, it's like the universe will sometimes tickle you with a feather to tell you you need to move on. And you sort of ignore that. And then it will probably throw a stone at you. And you'll probably still ignore that. But it takes something like a steamroller for you to actually get up and do something about it. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? And unfortunately for me, the the trigger was um, I I suffered a miscarriage. I suffered a miscarriage. And it was, I remember the year really, really clearly because it was 2004. And when I found out I was pregnant, it was like the happiest I, 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 was, I could not have been in a happier space. And then when I suffered the miscarriage, it, it 
my life just plummeted. And it was only sort of recovering out of that that I started to ask all the right questions. You know, is this all there is to life? Do do I want to be doing this for the rest of my life? You know, life is is just... What really dawned on me was the fragility of life, how fragile Mm -hmm. it is, and how 99% of the time we don't make the most of of who we are and, and what we will you know, really created for and designed for. We just sort of stick into whatever we think we can do. And if it's earning us a good wage, we're sort of almost happy to put up with it. But, you know, it mm-hmm. does cause a lot of stress in your life. Yes, definitely. And that's the, probably the reason people are so unhappy and struggling in their working life or even with their private life, right? Yeah. It's this... Uh, what it is, isn't it? Because they're not yeah. truly being themselves or truly connected to what they really need to be doing. Yeah, definitely not. You know, you know, it, it, it's funny. It's like a job is is what is, what is a job? It it is just like it's a task that needs to be done. You know, when you're when you're looking for an employee, you send out a job description, and if somebody can do those tasks, they're automatically put into the job. And there's absolutely no reference to who they are as a person. You know, as I said, I I could do the job of accounting, but nothing about accounting reflected my personality. And then I think there are people who um, they move from, they, they decide they're very unhappy in a job. So maybe like me, they would go into self-employment. But what they tend to do is they tend to have exactly the same career in self-employment as they did in employment. So they're still not living a life true to who they are. You know, they're just doing something. They're just doing a business that, you know, it's mainly to call the shots. It's a way to escape employment, you know, so they're still not being happy as a person and again remember I told you about my career guidance it took me right back to accounting so so career guidance they're based on your experience and again not who you are so you find that most people they're just so unhappy because they are like they're trying to fit into something that they're not Mm -hmm. and of course that is going to cause some friction in their lives it will really cause friction in their lives so what is the difference yeah. between finding your purpose and discovering the work you were born to do? I think, I remember I said, um, I, I sort of looked down the spiritual path when I, was, when I was on this mission to find what it is I was born to do. And more often or not, I found that the spiritual path, and I read so many spiritual books and I went to courses, there is... An incredible, uh, there's an incredible amount of inner reflection, but very, very seldom does it get to a true answer, a real answer or something concrete that you could put your, put your finger on or that you could start making inroads. And while I was pursuing this uh, spirituality route, I did a lot of, um, I don't know, like numerology and other bits and pieces, tests that would tell me what my purpose was. And so I used to get things like, oh, you are a number seven. You have a quest for freedom or a quest for wisdom. Or in another, um, another one that I did, I think it was human design, it was I take the results of my experiences and use it to project what I see as truth to the rest of the world. And for me, this sounded good as a purpose, but it was so vague and so big that I didn't have a clue where to start. Didn't have a clue where mm-hmm. to start. And this is what I find when people tell you this is your purpose. It, it's really, really vague. And, and it's difficult for you to, to really understand how you're meant to move forward with this. What is the first step that you need to take? And so your purpose is, is the reason you were created. The purpose of anything is, is why they were created. But in Discover the Work You're Born to Do, it is about understanding who you are at your core, because whatever it is you're born to do 
it's just an extension of who you are. You shouldn't need to try and fit into anything. You shouldn't need to try and force your way into it. It should 